And welcome to Positively Las Vegas, everyone. I'm Todd Quinones. There are so many things to love, of course, about Las Vegas, from its unbeatable sunsets to the neon glow of the Strip. But what really makes the city so special are all the people who live right here. So during the next 30 minutes, you're going to see stories from this week dedicated to people here in our community doing good things, regular everyday people making a difference and good things happening to those in need because we all need some help from time to time. So enjoy the very best of Las Vegas. And as more than 4 million people flee the country, one local man knew he had to act. In a story that is positively Las Vegas, reporter Sean Delancey has more on a Henderson man who traveled halfway around the world to help. We've talked with dozens of people living in comfort right here in the valley who've been horrified by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Many have done what they could to help the people in these war-torn lands, but it's safe to say that David Persica went above and beyond heading across the globe to help in person. David Persica watched millions flee their country, their homes, their lives from the comfort of his Henderson home. I'm a doer and I just knew I had to do something. So in late March, Persica boarded a flight at Harry Reid International and headed for Warsaw, Poland, a city that's welcomed more than two million desperate refugees in a little more than a month. They were just really overstretched with what what they could do and what they could offer. For eight days, with the help of crowdfunded cash, Persica began buying supplies for the pop-up kitchen, feeding refugees arriving at Warsaw's main train station. Beyond the throngs of people, Persica says he saw human beings, people with hopes, stories, aspirations, dashed by unspeakable violence. That was probably the hardest part, was having to compartmentalize my emotions, try not to cry in front of them. Like, I would literally take crying breaks. Um, hearing some of these stories of, of what was happening. On the other hand, Persik says he was inspired by Poland's open arms approach and the volunteers, many also from America, who stepped up to help. I feel like I haven't fully processed it yet. Now back home and safe, Persika says he won't forget the battered but unbroken people he met abroad. My hope to, is that for the people involved that they will gain a sense of community again. Persica knows not everyone can take eight days out of their lives and fly around the world, but he is calling on people to help any way they can. In the studio, I'm Sean Delancey. Las Vegas Strip to downtown. Las Vegas dazzles, of course, when it comes to entertainment. But what happens to those singers and dancers once the lights start to fade? Well, reporter Bree Guy shows us how one nonprofit is helping local senior burlesque and variety performers in tonight's Positively Las Vegas. Lights, cameras, action. That is Las Vegas. But what a lot of people don't think about is what these performers do after they retire. Tantalizing, exciting, campy, it's burlesque. A world where anything goes, but what happens when the inevitable happens? Here is a group of people that traveled a good part of their lives and they, they led very busy, fast lives. And they, you know, many of them didn't stop to think, oh, what am I going to do when I get older? You know, they, they didn't work nine to fives like a lot of people do. So they don't have like a 401k or they don't have a retirement, you know, package. Here's where Burley Care steps in. In 2018, Stephanie Castellone, also known as Ms. Charlemagne, a multi-talented performer and former hospice nurse, decided to combine both her passions. With the help of other new age burlesque artists, she founded the nonprofit. Burley Cares aims to help retired burlesque and variety performance artists who are no longer able to make a living full time. While they take jobs when they can, it's a life of hard work and commitment. And trust me, I took a swing at it and it's far from easy. They're very much into their persona. They lived it. It was like who they became. And they, they none of us, including them, want, want that to die. And so we keep it going. You know, we have them in shows, you know, like it's, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. Burley Cares provides case management, donates medical supplies, raises money, and combats isolation or loneliness. We're also in the homes too. Like we go see them, we visit them. Sometimes we take them to their vi doctor's visit. Whatever they need, if it's in the scope of what we do and can do, um, we do it. If you're interested in learning how to help out Burley Cares, there are volunteer opportunities and donation opportunities that you can find out more information about on our website, ktmv.com slash PLV. Reporting, Brie Guy.
From the basketball court to patrolling the streets of Las Vegas, keeping people safe, La Quitra Parks is making an impact in more ways than one at Clark High School. And sports reporter Tina Wynn joins us live in the studio and she shares a story of how one woman is influencing the next generation in more ways than just one, Tina. Yeah, uh, Abel and Trisha, when La Quitra Parks returned home to Las Vegas, she had a deep desire to simply inspire change. Since leading the Clark High School Chargers to their first state title this past season, Parks is proving that she's doing more than just winning games. She's changing lives. I'm super happy. Uh, to be here on both ends, you know, as an officer and a coach. You know, I get many kids that tell me, hey, you know, uh, what do I have to do to become an officer? From being first to a crime scene to coaching on the sidelines, Lakeja Parks is pulling double duty. I made a career jump. You know, I was working with uh, the marshals, uh, county marshals over downtown, and um, I ended up coaching here. And I really just love the atmosphere, gaining that relationship with the kids. Parks has already etched her name in the history books, leading the Chargers to their first state title in school history. Our season this year, uh, we went 10-0, and 0, um, so we were undefeated. We set history for Clark this year. It's a legacy that the girls are leaving. I tell them that, you know, make history, leave a legacy, something that you can come back home to and, you know, give back to the next generations to come. But this championship coach is doing more than making history on the court. She's making a difference in the community. Her inspiration to become a police officer was born from her desire to inspire change. I um, was in school in Oklahoma, and that was around the time where things were kind of transpiring for, you know, law enforcement. For me, when I made it back home, I was with the county marshals, but I just wanted to find that niche of where I fit, you know, where I was going to be impactful and make that change. Parks is the definition of a true hometown hero. Clark is special to me. You know, I went to Cashman, um, so I grew up around this area. It's special to me that I get to come back and, you know, and give. That might be as impressive as it gets. Coach Parks winning a state title in her second full season as the Chargers head coach. Safe to say the sky is the limit for this program. And we'll be back with more Positivity Las Vegas after the break. And welcome back to Positivity Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories that you're watching today, you can visit ktnv.com slash PositivelyLV. And by the way, if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You could email us at PositivelyLV at KTNV.com. We certainly love to hear your ideas. Henderson Rabbi is part of a special delegation heading to Poland to help Ukrainian refugees. And I had a chance to speak with him and one of the organizers just days before they head out. And they talked about their mission and how you at home can help. <laughs> The most important thing is bearing witness. Rabbi Sanford Axelrod is a spiritual leader at Congregation near Tamid on Valley Verde in 215 in Henderson. Rabbis, cantors, and others heading to Poland to deliver aid to Ukrainian refugees. He's encouraging all Las Vegans to do their part. This is a time to pay attention because what's happening with these people really affects the entire world and there is something that we can do. It may not change the whole world, but if we help one or two or three people, we change their world. While in Poland, he'll be handing out toiletries, medication, candy bars and teddy bears for children, and so much more. We're giving all the medical supplies, all that, but just a face of kindness in a world that they now find cruel, give them a little bit of hope. The trip was arranged through the Jewish Community Center of Krakow, Poland, which is providing 10,000 meals to refugees every day. You know, Rabbi Jeffrey started. Salkin of Florida is an organizer working in conjunction with J2 Adventures, a Jewish travel group. What is the number one need of the refugees right now? I want to say number one, we are bringing supplies. We are bringing, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Almost two tons of supplies. Along with those supplies, this special delegation has raised more than a half a million dollars in donations. Rabbi Salkin is challenging everyone to do their part. This is the worst humanitarian crisis in Europe since the end of World War II. What are you going to do when your children and grandchildren ask you, what did you do? Rabbi Axelrod agrees and says everyone can help. So many different charities. Pick one. 
pick one that you have faith in. It could be your church, could be your synagogue, could be your mosque, it could be uh, uh, the American Red Cross. All of these organizations are coming to the fore to say, we're going to help, we're going to make a difference. And Rabbi Axelrod leaves at the end of the week. The group will be in Poland April 10th through the 14th, and we will be sure to follow up with the rabbi about his trip when he's back. So if you're interested in making a donation, we have more information on our website. Just visit ktnv.com support Ukraine. And we'll be back with more Positivity Las Vegas after the break. And welcome back to Positivity Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories that you're watching today, you can visit ktnv.com slash positively LV. And by the way, if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You can email us at positively LV at ktnv.com. We certainly love to hear your ideas. Two strangers, two veterans, now connected in a way no one could have seen coming. Yeah, in this week's Veterans Voice, we meet a man who went above and beyond, really, to honor a fellow veteran's service. 38-year-old Will Bouchelle excelled during his time as a Navy SEAL, serving in combat in Iraq and dispatched to several other places around the world. His dad, who lives in Florida, says Will enlisted in the Navy right out of high school. He said he wasn't ready for college. That was a little disappointing to us, but uh, he more than made up for it. <laughs> and uh, as, as, you might, as you might know, we're very proud of him. Will lost his life in a car crash in 2014. It happened right here at Durango Drive and Washburn Road in Northwest Las Vegas. Born in St. Louis, he moved to the Valley in 2004. Uh, even though Will is gone, he continues to uh, influence our lives and uh, uh, help us make friendships. And the latest friendship stemming from this shadow box up for sale during the last weekend of March at a swap meet in Huntington Beach, California. Inside, the combat uniform and medals once worn by Will Bouchel. I saw the I saw the shadow box and I just I mean, my heart just pretty much dropped. Like Will, Fernando Gonzalez is also a Navy veteran. You found this at a swap meet that you were at with your wife? Yes, I, we usually go to swap meet on the weekends because uh, for my hobby, I collect bobbleheads. It just, it just stopped me on my track when I seen it. Fernando didn't hesitate. He bought the shadow box for $150, even though he had no clue who Will was. But he knew he had a mission. You know, he describes seeing Will's shadow box as a moment where just everything stopped. He looked at his wife. She knew because he was a veteran exactly what he was thinking and exactly what he was about to do. That's what he said. And she said, you need to buy it. <laughs> you need to get it. And, that, you know, I mean, that's, that's the wonderful thing. Fernando and Irma spent the next few hours looking for Will's family before finding them on Facebook. What was that moment like? when you finally reached his family and they were talking to you on the other end of that phone? It's, it, I can't even explain the happiness I got. Will's dad says he gave the uniform to a friend of Will's after the car accident. He's not sure how the shadow box found its way to that swap meet, but he's glad by some miracle it found its way to Fernando. It reminds us that uh, people who served um, our brotherhood and they look after each other. Yeah, and that they certainly do. That shadow box right now is in the middle of being shipped. It should arrive to Will's parents there in Florida by the end of the week. And here's the thing about Fernando, as you know, because you helped uh, set up this story. You've talked to all parties involved. Uh, Fernando refuses to uh, accept any kind of money from Will's parents, uh, saying, you know, he just did it because he wanted to honor uh, Will's memory and, and honor uh, his family. And his family was so, so thankful for what Fernando and his wife did. Uh, yeah. I spoke with uh, Will's mother, and she was just crying to me on the phone saying, this is just this shows how great people are right. out there and yep. how willing they are to help. Um, so, by the way, if you'd like to honor Will, there is a scholarship at his alma mater. This is in Southern Illinois University. We have the link on your screen, and if you'd like to contribute, all you need to do is click on the drop box and select Will Bouchel Scholarship. Yeah, a valiant effort there by Fernando, a complete stranger now. And by the way, Fernando and Will's parents, they've struck up a friendship too, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we'll be back with more Positivity Las Vegas after the break.
What do you got lined up this weekend? You could explore the valley like you never have before on a Vegas trike adventure. Woo! Enjoying Las Vegas is not just for tourists. Locals, your adventure starts just west of the Strip at the family-owned Vegas Trike Adventures. Zion and Marilyn Irizarry invite you to hit the open road on a trike or a slingshot. Take a ride on the Red Rock Tour, but first, pass iconic landmarks and discover your inner biker. Then it's out west towards the mountains where you will feel an awesome sense of freedom on the open road. Enjoy several pit stops and photo ops along the way, including the historic town of Blue Diamond. The final stop reveals a stunning view of the Red Rock Mountains and a moment of appreciation. Locals book online with the code TRIKEFUN22 and receive 20% off now through the end of June. And if you could go back in time, what would you do? I go shopping. That's right, Vintage Market Days are back this weekend on the lawn at downtown Summerlin. Hunt for treasures among the one-of-a-kind antiques, retro, and vintage finds. For even more great ideas, just head to our website and look for 13 things. Have a great week. And welcome back to Positively Las Vegas, our show that highlights the people that make Las Vegas home. For more details on the stories that you're watching today, you can visit ktnv.com slash positivelylv. And by the way, if you know someone who is helping make Las Vegas and its residents better, reach out to us. You can email us at PositivelyLV at KTNV.com. We certainly love to hear your ideas. We're all paying more for everything from housing to gas to food, but an effort is underway to help make an impact. No Kid Hungry and Unidos US are breaking down barriers to healthy, affordable eating access for Latino families. Reporter Brie Guy has more. Chef Cesar Zarpata knows firsthand the struggles Latino families face. He fondly remembers his mother telling him what SNAP meant to their family. To this day, she tells us that she's very thankful that she was able to benefit from, from SNAP because if not, then um, we couldn't have food. We couldn't, you know, she couldn't have been able to pay her bills or she couldn't been able, you know, to pay rent. So Polly would we would have been in the streets. Zapata is a member of the No Kid Hungry Leadership Council. No Kid Hungry, a national campaign in Unidos US, the country's largest Hispanic civil rights and advocacy group are coming together to make eligible Latino families aware of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, known as SNAP. Better nutrition programs like SNAP can help, but they only work if families can access them. Families can use their benefits at local programs like the pop-up veggie buck truck. There you can get a pound of fresh produce for about one dollar, putting those snap dollars to good use. One of the great things about the pop-up produce markets today is that we accept snap benefits and anybody that uses their snap EBT card is able to get a coupon that they can use for uh, future purchases as well. So the pop-up produce markets are scheduled Wednesdays at the downtown Bonneville Transit Center or the Southern Nevada Health District at Decatur in Meadows Lane through the fall. You can find out more information on the schedule on our website, ktv.com slash PLV. Free guy reporting. The increase in gas prices, RTC wants to help you try and cut down on those costs. So this month, the so-called Club Ride program, it is free. That program makes it easy for people to get to their destination by carpooling. So if you sign up for the program from now until the end of the month, you're going to receive free carpool match reports, you know, 30 days of free RTC bike share or 14 days of free public transit. For more information on this and how you could join, you can visit our website at ktnv.com slash links. And thanks for watching Positively Las Vegas, a show dedicated to the people that make our city shine so bright. Uh, by the way, if you miss any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote and then scroll down until you see Positively Las Vegas. Or if you want, you can visit ktnv.com slash positivelylv to find more stories like these on our website. Now stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break and also check us out anytime right here on KTNV Streaming, Las Vegas News on your time.